Hello everyone and welcome back. Today's build is bringing back a rather hidden titan exotic that was popular at the start of Destiny 2, but over time lost its touch and that is the Halifire Heart. Because of the existence of Heart Amos Light, Halifire has become more of an antique exotic for users to use, and doesn't offer the same level of strength that Heart provides. On top of that, Heart works with all subclasses, while Halo only works with Solar, so it's straight away players will hover to Heart more often. However, this season has allowed the exotic to make a return through a simple seasonal artifact mod provided, which are Solar Surge, Flare Up, and Rain of Firebolts. With Firebolts being popular this season and their low cooldown, they make a perfect pair with Halo Fire Heart, and allows us to create a massive Scorcher Condition setup. Using this will provide us with a 350% ability regen rate at full super, a 17% solar weapon buff, easy to start ignition setup, and mass destruction which can be used against bosses for DPS and more. So let's make a start. To start you're going to want to have Soul Invictus where solar ability thunder blows creates sunspots, your abilities regenerate faster as super drains more slower while in it. Then you want to have Roar and Flames where final blows with solar abilities increase the damage of your solar abilities. With Halo Fire Heart high ability regen rate when our super is at full, we can have a near instant ability return as long as we create also awesome power, sunspot, and having a full super on hand. This means that when it comes down to mods and stats, you won't need to heavily invest just to get the best results. Using fireball grenades with their 1 minute 4 second cooldown rate, along with Halo Fire and sunspots, can allow you to get around a 20 second cooldown rate, and this is without the mods or perks for grenade region added alongside it. You're getting quite a good deal just from the following alone. Looking into the fragments, Ember of Torches, where power melee attacks against targets make you and allies radiant, Ember of Searing, where defeating the school's target grants melee energy and creates fire sprite, Ember of Char, where your solar ignition scorch to other targets, and Ember of Ashes, where you can apply more scorch stacks to targets. As Firebolts have received quite a buff this season, they have the ability to now scorch targets at a fast rate compared to everything else available. With Flare Up providing a plus 50 to Scorch build up, Firebolts providing a plus 20, and Ashes a plus 30, you can cause the target to ignite with just two Firebolt grenades alone. This is great as you can build into Ignitions more via Blistering and Wandering if you like, and as long as you meet the given requirements, you can cause mass Ignitions over and over again anywhere you go. For the mods and stats section, we are going to invest into discipline just so that our ability is always reliable to use outside of our exotic. At the same time, resilience and strength will also be helping us out in the long run, but in a smaller degree. As we will be getting 2 grenades thanks to the Reign of Firebolt artifact, and with its low cooldown rate, we can pretty much go for a tier 7 to tier 10 ranges and then add on energy replenishment mods to backfill the covered areas. Because of the short cooldown rate that Fireball grenades have, it means that we can invest less or more in the stats and still benefit greatly from it with the user needing to compromise on their end. In fact, with my exotic and this sunspot applied, we can actually have a tier 7 of the stat and do pretty well from there. I of course went with a high stat just so that we don't need to rely on other weapon perks such as demolitionists to support us even more, but also to prevent situations where our exotic effect is nullified or if we are using our abilities and we die mid process. So you're only going to need to have the grenade kickstart mod as the regen timer for the build is at least 20 seconds. As this is pretty small for the mod details, you can go ahead and add on the ashes acid mod for super regen via grenades and the firepower mod for creating orbs of power via grenades. Now your resilience can be at tier 8 to 10 as we want to have a high damage reduction while playing and using this the most end game content, but the rest of the stats now can be as you like. Considering that the build is pretty self-sufficient within a subclass trait, you can invest into other key areas such as armor charge mods to sustain the build for longer. Charged up and solar cipher mod will both help with creating orbs of power as we go along. Times 2 solar surge mod for that 17% damage boost when using solar weapons. Time dilation to extend the surge mod's duration and then special ammo finisher and finder mod for your solar secondary which in our case is going to be the Prometheus Lens for extra damage. Now lastly, the weapons being used will ideally need to have incandescent on it so that we can create scorch from kills and also use it to trigger ignitions via grenades and melee. 
I have found that Prometheus Lens this season is the ideal weapon to have thanks to the recent buff they've received. Now the weapon can apply a consistent scorch damage the longer you hold the trigger down onto a target and also get a kill with the weapon will spread plus 30 scorch to others nearby thanks to the incandescent perk. And pairing this with our build allows us to scorch and ignite targets via grenades and following weapon together. You can of course use a solo weapon with incandescent instead if you have one spare or even the Skyburner's Oath if you're looking to take this into GMs. But Prometheus seems to be the best when it comes to applying Scorch at a large scale, while also taking out groups of ads within this laser radius. After that, your heavy can be flexible depending on what you want to use for it. Cry Mutiny Grenade Launcher is a nice pair to have as it can get Vorpal and Incandescent together, but it's also kind of bugged where you can trigger multiple conditions via the Vorpal weapon usage. If not, then the Foam Cleaver is another great choice to get this season as you can get Tyler's Blade and Incandescent in one. This is new and incredibly strong when paired with a high damage setup as the heavy attack can trigger ignitions depending on the target it applies it to. At the same time, the light attacks are also pretty strong to use and can also trigger Scorch to spread, so with the right setup, you can use this to your advantage and bring total mayhem. So as mentioned before, fireball grenades are now meta until the end of the season of course and whether Bungie decides to buff them or not is entirely unknown. Now they aren't outright useless even after the season ends but their lack of damage does make using them hard to warrant. If you're using them, ever, then you should be using them to trigger Scorch and Ignition Blast which is where the build falls under in today's session. By utilising the new seasonal mods and making the grenades more viable in all content where it would feel weak to use, we can create a melting pot of solo grenades which can be similar to if we were using some braces instead. Both flare up and vein of fire bolts will allow users to apply more scorch rear grenades but also having two instead of one so you can easily use them one after another if you wish. With the high ability regen they offer, we can cause ignitions to occur at a much higher rate which can clear out areas even if the grenades don't get the kill. On top of that, it will also be creating fire splice for even more grenade ability regen at our helm. Some may say this is a bit of an overkill on our end, but actually this is working as intended as we want to fill an area up with ignitions for easier clearage. Now, once GMs are open and things like background Mars or even the new strikes are made available, we are going to want to have a setup available that can clear out large rooms within seconds. Enemies will be tougher of course, and although we can use other ad clearing builds that we are more familiar with, such a build can help massively from start to finish and is self sustaining, which is a must for most content. The only issue I found with the build is the lack of healing provided. Unless you use the recuperation mod or have a teammate heal you in some way, I can see the build being hard to manage in higher end game content if you aren't careful. But this, of course, isn't a huge issue to worry about nor do you need to concern yourself with if you just play it smart. Outside of that, it's great to see two items that were once looked down on favourable again with many players. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and a sub bar here. I will leave a dim link for the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, I hope to see you again soon.